nights for three months, I don't know whether I can see these targets in the daytime or not. You got an okay for me to qualify, didn't you? Yeah, I'll show you that new grip I've got on my gun. Think it'll work all right. Maybe hey, you'd like to show me how. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I had to set the boys straight on traffic procedure. Go ahead, don't let me stop you. Hey, not bad. New grip's gonna be all right. I don't see how you can even hit that target after bouncing up and down on a motor all night. Shh. He might hear you. You mean you're gonna let your sister marry a motorcycle knot? Smart boy. Gene told me to remind you about coming to dinner tonight. Yes, yeah, too bad you're on night, so you catch a movie with us. You better start burning some of that midnight oil. Final exams are next week, you know. If I don't know the answers now, I'll never know them. Hey, what's Gene having for dinner? Not stew again, I hope. Uh, how do you like that? You think the guy was paying board? Wait till he marries Gene. She'll keep him in line. That remains to be seen. Keep it on the wheels. So long, Ken. You made plenty, Jeannie. Do all men have appetites like you and Larry, or is it just my luck to be stuck with two freaks? Watch it, you'll make me <laughs> feel something. Say, look, honey, if you'd been dragged through a knot hole all day like I have, you'd be hungry, too. You know, it's going to be such a relief to get out of the academy and onto a nice, quiet motorcycle. Not to hear Larry tell it. Larry? Your brother found a home on the force. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. Put it back. <laughs> How do you like that? Henpecked already, we're not even married. You know, it's not too late to back out. What? Well, you're already stuck with one cop in the family. Sure you want to take... before we check in. Sounds good to me. Get any more nights as quiet as this, I'm going to go to work for a living. Car 121, traffic, century at 89, code 3. Hey, that's not very far from here. Let's have a look. They might need some help. Did you call the police? Yes, I did. Want to tell me how it happened? Hey, wait a minute. We didn't do it. Well, I didn't say you did. Did you see it happen? Well, uh, no, not exactly. You see, it was this way, officer. Me and my boyfriend, uh, that's him, we were coming back from a convention. The um, Amalgamated Dress Manufacturers. I'm a, a, a model. So uh, we see this man lying over there on the road, and my boyfriend says he must be drunk. And I said he looked dead. So my boyfriend says we're both right. He's dead drunk. He's sharp, that boyfriend. A regular comedian. Come on, honey, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, aren't you going to take any pictures of my boyfriend and me? Not right now. What's your name, miss? Renee Roulette. And your boyfriend? Uh, John, uh, 
Hey, what did you say your name was? Smith. John Smith. Uh, John Smith. Looks like it, but no witnesses. What about that couple over there? They discovered the body. I checked their car, and their story seems okay. Is that all? You might check that cafe down the road after it opens. You might have come from there. I'll do that. Looks like we'll have to call the brains in on this one. And he was lying here, probably killed instantly. Physical evidence? No, nothing much. No tire marks, no skid marks. A couple of blood stains here. No broken auto parts or glass fragments. Nothing but a dead man and a name. Well, the time to beef is when we get him without a name. Thompson, Richard T., age 23, 674, Colgate. Compound fracture of the skull and occipital region, lacerations, both legs broken. Any sign of alcohol? No, slight. But the coroner says he wasn't drunk. Maybe we can pass this on to homicide. As far as I'm concerned, it's still for traffic. Take a look at that cafe. Maybe you can get a lead there. Right. Bill, you go down to that Colgate address. Maybe you can get something on that. Oh, that poor boy. With a whole house full of rumors, why did it have to be Jake? You liked him, then? <laughs> oh, sure, everybody did. He was my best tenant. If it had to be somebody, why couldn't it have been one of the others? Like the great Hector and his trained dogs. <laughs> Or Rosie Murchison, who's always getting drunk and falling down the stairs. Oh, you have no idea the things I have How long I have, have you been here? About two months. He took Professor Bill Steen's room. He was a chemist. Oh, you should have seen what he did to my walls and ceiling before one of his experiments blew him right out through the window. What about his friends? The professor? No, Thompson. Oh, yes. Well, he never did any entertaining. Spent most of his time at his work. What did he do? He was a salesman for the Goodwill Used Car Company. Oh, a good one, too. He almost had me sold on buying one, till I remembered I couldn't drive. But now... <laughs> Goodwill Used Car. We don't call ourselves the Goodwill a lot for nothing. If there's anything wrong with your car, by all means, bring it back. We'd rather have your Goodwill than the few dollars that we make on the deal. Can you imagine the <coughs> cheap chiseling? Uh, we got a nice letter from the community chest thanking you for your check. And uh, the dealers association would like you to be their main speaker Tuesday. Oh, and your wife asked me to tell you to bring home something for the children. And there's a gentleman from the police department to see you. Police department? Oh, come in, come in. Sorry to keep you waiting. That'll be all. Sit down. Now, what can I do for you? I'm from Traffic Investigation. One of your employees, uh, Richard Thompson, was found dead on a highway early this morning. Thompson? Dead. Looks like hit and run. Is there anything you can tell us about him? Well, he'd only been with us for about a month. I found him a very hard worker, very conscientious. As far as I know, he didn't go in for drinking. Uh, where did it happen? On Century and 89th. Was he in any kind of trouble that you know of? What do you mean? Just routine. We're trying to dig up everything we can about him. No, as far as I know, he wasn't in any trouble. But I don't check on my employee's personal affairs. Any of his friends ever dropped by? He stuck pretty close to business. That's what I liked about him. You're not holding any mail for him by any chance? No, he never got any mail here. Well, thanks very much for your cooperation, Mr. Miller. Here's my card in case anything comes up. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, this is Connie Taylor. I want to speak to Mr. Garver, please. Oh, hello, Russ. This is Connie. The police just dropped in on Miller. They said they found Thompson dead early this morning. What else did they say? Well, I can't talk right now. Listen, I'll see you at the Hangman Cafe tonight at 7 o'clock. What's the matter, Ginger? Ah, these creeps we get for customers, they're driving me crazy. I'm gonna quit. Quit? Well, when you first came here, you were full of ambition. You were, you were gonna go places, do things. What happened to all that? That's all gone now. I'll never be anything but a waitress. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, look at me. How do you think I started? Yeah, I know. You're gonna own your own place. Forty stools, television on every stool, ten bartenders. Yeah, how did you know? You've only been telling me for the last seven years. Yeah, that ought to prove I mean it. And Danny Weaver's got a swell spot picked out for me. Real cheap. Oh, that's swell, Omar. I wish you luck. Hey, wish us both luck. You'll be with me. You're my partner. Hey, Omar, I can't eat this soup. Hey, there's Danny now, huh? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me handle him, huh? Take it easy. Yeah. What's the trouble? I tell you, I can't eat this soup. Take it easy now, will you? Why can't you eat this soup? No spoon. No spoon. Yeah. Here. Liz. Danny. What about that cafe you're going to get me, huh? Oh, somebody beat me to it. But I got my eye on a better spot. I'll know in a couple of days. Oh, swell. Great. Then all you got left is soup? You think it'll kill you to go on a liquid diet? But I'm hungry. Well, so am I. Stick around a while. We'll go out to lunch across the street. Mm. Yeah. Here's that menu. Order for me, will you? Yeah. Well, what'll it be? I'd like some information. What are you, the police? Ask a dull question, you get a shiny answer. Hmm. Traffic investigation. You know anything about a man who was killed out here on the highway early this morning? Must have been after I closed. Sharper, too, like the law says. Anything unusual happened before you closed? Yeah. We did a little business. No, I don't mean that. I mean a fight or a good hot argument. Oh, no, I don't permit any fights, brother. Oh, no. There was a little tussle there last week. Nothing light, you know. After we put the ceiling back and rebuilt the place, I made a rule. No more fights. No arguments either, huh? I didn't say that. There uh, was a kind of a little argument, but nothing illegal. I guess you'd call it an honest difference of opinion. Know any of the people? Not by their names. I uh, only know them by, ooh, hey, you, scotch and soda, gin fizz, or muscatel. You'd recognize them if you saw them again, though, huh? Could be, yeah. You mind taking a little ride downtown with me? I'd like you to take a look at somebody. Well, always, always glad to oblige your law. Sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, cat cop, take over, will you? Yeah. Incidentally, uh, where are we going? More. The more. There's nobody home. Let's go, huh? Are you happy? Hello. Happy here? You recognize him? Yeah. Scotch and soda. That's one of the guys. When the last time he saw me, he looked better. Who else was in the argument? A fellow and a girl. But like I said, I, I never remember names, just just faces. Not that kind of. Could you point out the girl if she showed up again? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. She comes in a place all the time. Say, couldn't we continue this outside, huh? Yeah, sure. Don't mention this to anybody, and I'll show up at the cafe tonight. How about some lunch? No, thanks. Oh, come on. Oh, uh, so long, Happy. So long. Hope to see you again real soon. Don't wait up. Cheer up, sis. Another day and I'll be back on the day shift. This night work's killing me. Is it that bad? You've been standing up under it pretty well for the last ten years. I guess it gets to all of us eventually. And Ken still wants to ride a motorcycle. I don't know. You wouldn't want him working in vice squad. Of course not, but it's dangerous. You know, you've been pretty lucky all these years. I'll say. Hey, what am I hanging around here for? I've got a roll call in 20 minutes. So long, sis. I'll be seeing you. Hi, Larry. Oh, hi, uh, Flynn. Dig up anything in that hit and run yesterday? Oh, nothing sensational, but it's got some funny angles. 
Hey, when's the kid's sister getting married? Soon as Ken graduates. Look, you better talk to her before it's too late. Explain to her what she's getting into. What? Having a motorcycle cop. Having one for a brother's bad enough. <laughs> Why, you... <laughs> Come on, Tom, let's go. How'd you make out? Uh, the bartender at the cafe identified the body. Said he was in some kind of a argument just before he left the place. Who with? Man and a woman. He didn't know their names. I plan on hanging around the cafe a couple of nights. The girl in the case was a regular. What did you find out about Thompson? Not too much. He worked for the Goodwill Used Car Company. Character references left and right. Goes to prove only the good die young. Well, I'll be on tonight, so keep in touch. This time I am given notice. All night I knock myself out waiting on those characters, and what do they leave? One lousy nickel. It's all your fault. My fault? Sure, you ought to get a better class of people in here. Oh, uh, honey, now wait a minute. That's no way to talk. Not to me. You know the plans I'm making. Oh, you're not going to play that record again. Look, who loves you? Who thinks about you all the time? Who can you trust? I'll bite. Who? Your mother. But you know I'm thinking, kid. I got it up here. Don't lose it. Oh, honestly, I, I, I don't know why I have to go for you. I, I can have my choice of two girls. Same one. Well, as uh, 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 well, you know, I, I lead a very quiet life. Here we go again. Yeah. Well, make them tip you in advance. Say, Omar, I think I've got an ideal spot for you. You do? Great. Where is it? Sixth and Spruce. Beautiful layout. Thirty stools, television. Say no more. I'm convinced. I'll call the first thing in the morning. Are you out of your mind? You'll call them right now. Somebody's liable to steal it right out from under your nose. Right now, call them. You're right. Nichols. Nichols. Yeah. Nichols. Yeah. Well, it sounds wonderful. Dirty stools. Television. Brother, what a deal. What's the number? Spring 5864. What am I doing? Spring 5864. Sounds wonderful, huh? I know that corner, too. Oh, it's a wonderful corner. Six and Spruce. A lot of people go by there. Hello? Hello, say, I'm calling about the place. Hello? Hello? I was cut off. Did you get your nickel back? No. We'll get the operator. Yeah. You like that. Everything happens to me right in the middle of a chance. I'm making a deal and you... Hello? Operator, this is the second coin I put in. Yeah. I want, I want, I want my coin back. I want my party. Huh? I, my name and address? Don't let her get away with that. Get your nickel back. You never mind my name and address. Just return my nickel and get my party. Yeah. I don't want it mailed. Look, I don't want the refund operator. I... Look, will you... What did she say? No. Are you going to stand for that? No. Get to the chief operator. Yeah. It happened to me. My unlucky day. Get a chance to make a wonderful deal. Six. Uh, hello, hello, operator. Uh, I want to speak to the chief operator. Yeah. yeah. Hello, chief. This is Omar Shelley. Fine, thanks. How are you? Get to the point. Yeah, look, chief. Let's get to the point. I've been throwing coins in here. Nothing's happened. Will you return my money right now? I, I don't want it mailed. I don't want the. I don't want the refund operator. Will you? She said they'd mail them. Are you going to stand for that? They're delaying your chances to make a good deal. Sue them. Huh? Yeah. That's right. I'll sue. I'll sue. I know a good lawyer. Hello? Hello, operator? Now, look, I've been throwing coins in here. Nothing has happened. I want the money back right now or I sue. Now, uh, hold on. Hello? Uh, I got the legal department. Threaten them. Threaten them. Yeah. Now, look, operator. I want that money back. I've been throwing money in here. I've been throwing four coins, five. I lost track. I want the dough now or I'm prepared to sue. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Sending me back to the chief operator. Tell her that you two don't get along. We two don't get along. Tell her that you're an American citizen and your taxes pay her salary. You're fired. How do you like that? Why does everything have to happen to me? Take it to the president. Huh? President. You're right. President. President. Yeah. White House. Yeah. What? Uh, the president of the company. Oh, no, I take this higher. White House, Washington, D.C. Dear President... How do you spell Coolidge? T-R-U-M-A-N. Dear... Harry, in the last election, I voted three times. Well, make it a hot letter. I'll see you later. Over. Yes, well, the least you could do is have this phone situation looked into. We were, were thinking of hiring a pianist, Harry, and, uh, I... Anybody show up? Huh? No, not yet. I'll be right over there. If you spot anybody, just whistle. So what song? Never mind the song. Just whistle. Hello, 
Ma? Hiya. Double bourbon, please. Yeah, sure. Old stuff, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Never let it be said that I let a pretty girl pay for her own drink. I, uh, yeah. don't remember seeing you around here before. I'm the common type that gets lost in a crowd. Uh, bourbon. Here, allow me. I hope your boyfriend isn't jealous. Worried? Yeah. I don't know how big he is. Excuse me. Thanks for the drink. That's the boyfriend. One in the argument with Thompson the other night? Yeah. Why are you so late? Some things came up. What are you going to have? Two bourbon highs, double. Tell me, what happened last night? I don't get you. After I left you and Dick Thompson. What? Nothing happened. Now, what are you trying to hand me? I know better than that. Look, the only reason I told you he was going to the police was so you could scare him and keep That's him in line. That's just what I did. And he just happens to wander out and get himself killed. What did the police say? Hit and run. Okay, that's what it was. Hit and run. Look, baby Thompson would have ruined everything for you and me if we were sent up. We'd never... What did your wife say? What do you mean? She doesn't know anything about Thompson. Well, I mean, what did she say when you told her about us, when you told her you were going to get a divorce? Well, I, uh... As a matter of fact, I haven't told her yet. You I... haven't? I'm just as anxious as you are, but while I'm waiting for the right time, we don't want any trouble. You leave it to me, honey. Oh, Hangman's Cafe. Who? Russ Garver. Just a minute. Is there a Russ Garver here? Telephone. Garver. Yeah? It was that mercury we lifted this morning. We hadn't even started on it yet. Huh? I don't know. Her car's here, yeah. Well, when I got back, the hot job was gone. Sure. It must be on the hot sheet. How'd you get here? I, I took one of the cars. At the garage. Sure. What's eating you? You mean... Give me the keys. Drive mine home. Him, the night's still young. We never did finish our drink. Sorry, it'll have to be some other time. I'm afraid that's too late. Maybe we better send for a tow truck. You can still get away from that bucket of bolts you're riding. Uh on the hot sheet.
What happened to that hand, boss? Get rid of the car. Rip it apart. Is it that dame? Never mind. Just get going. Come on, man. 101M, 101M, request location, unit 125M. 125M, 125M, code 1, please acknowledge. 125M, 125M, code 1, please acknowledge. All units, be on lookout for unit 125M. Last week in 77th Street Division in pursuit of stolen car 798 on the hot sheet. Any information for the watch commander, Traffic Enforcement Division. What's the matter, honey? They called from downtown to see if Larry was here. He hasn't reported in. Doesn't mean anything. I waited. I didn't know what to do, so I phoned you. Take it easy. Larry's an old hand, one of the best on the force. Something came up and he just couldn't make it. You think so? Sure. But some coffee. Get a guy up in the middle of the night, you don't expect him to get along without it, do you? I forgot about it. Larry, what do you do? What happened, huh? They found him dead. anything you need or any more we could do, well, we'd all appreciate a chance to help. Thank you. I know you would. Where are you going, Jane? To my aunt's for a few days. Could I drive you down to the station? Ken's going to take me. I'll get my bag. I'd like to ask you a favor. Sure. I know I'm in training, but I'd like a chance to do something. How do you mean? To help find the guy that killed Larry. Well, the case is in pretty good hands now, but sure can. Come on down tomorrow. We'll talk to Dearbin. Thanks. That's type B, all right. That's about all we've got so far. Fine. I'll take it into Dearbin. According to Tom Morgan's report, Larry took out after number 798 on the hot sheet. A black mercury that was stolen yesterday morning. That means homicide and auto theft are both in on it. Yes, but there's still a traffic case to it, and we're going to break it. You know, I've got a wild hunch. What? Some way or other, Larry's death ties in with Thompson. There's no evidence. No. No, we couldn't put anybody into court. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing, the way that girl in the argument in the cafe turned out to be Miller's secretary. Yeah, but if we picked up the girl and Garver, they'd both clam up. Yeah. Well, what have you got? Blood stains on the motor, definitely not Larry's. Some paint shipped off the hit-and-run car. The lab's breaking it down now. Let me see it. We know the motor got stuck on the car. This probably means the driver had to get out and pull it loose. No fingerprints, though. Homicide's checking all injuries treated about that time. Hey. Auto theft picked up a young hood from Chicago named Hank Simmons trying to sell a stolen car with Illinois license. Yeah, what about it? Well, they found a bunch of addresses on it. One of them was the used car lot, the Goodwill, our friend Miller. Simmons has never been in town before. I wonder if Miller is buying stolen cars. Uh, have auto theft put a hold on Hank Simmons. Keep him undercover. Flynn and I are burnt up, but it shouldn't be hard to find somebody to play Simmons. And as a young fellow. Maybe we better get somebody from the academy. What about Ken Forster? Who's he? He's at the academy. Engaged to Larry's sister. He came down to see if he could help out on the case. He's right outside. Send in Forster. This would help a lot if he looked like Simmons. He looks a lot like those pictures. Oh? You sure he can handle it? Certain of it. You Ken Forster? Yes, sir. And you want to help us find out who killed Larry? I guess everybody in the department feels that way. Well, I'll get acquainted with these reports, and then we'll do a lot of talking. Yes, sir.
sorry. I'll mail them as soon as I get the stamps on them. They should have been put in the mail yesterday afternoon at the very latest. If I were you, I'd fire him. Is there anything I can do for you? Right now, I'd like to see Mr. Miller. Later on, I'll answer the question. You want to buy a car? No, I'll sell one. Well, I'll get one of the appraisers. No, this needs private appraising. I've got to see the boss. And don't forget to... Who's this? The fellow wants to see you on business. Oh? And who are you? Hank Simmons, from Chicago. And you wanted what? I want to sell a car. Get Mr. Lindsay. I tried to, but he... No, you'll do. The fellow back east told me that if I ever got stuck for dough and uh, if I had some good merchandise, I should come to see Mr. Miller and I'd be well taken care of. Tell me if I'm wrong. It sounds as if you're trying to sell me a stolen car. Well... Is, is that right? I didn't say it was stolen. A hot car. You want me, a legitimate dealer, to buy a hot car. Miss Taylor, you're my witness. The, the boy said... Wait, what, what are you doing? You're not going to report him, are you? I certainly am. Why not? I don't think it would be good publicity. After our trouble over Thompson? Get out. And don't come back. If you do, I will turn you in. You heard what the man said. Yeah, I guess Mr. Miller doesn't want to do business. <laughs> what kind of a car is it? Nice new out of state Oldsmobile, clean. Guy must be nuts. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to get rid of. Yeah, I think I know where. Car. Both. I'll guarantee the car. Oh, well, why not? That guy Thompson must have given your boss a bad time. No, he was just a kid who worked with us for a while. He he got in an accident. What kind of an accident? I'll ask the questions. You answer. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss IQ. What's your tie-up in Chicago? Bud Haynes sent me out. You uh, handle hot cars? A lukewarm. Well, that gives you two dollars. Want to try for four? Sure. How many can they deliver? All a dealer can handle. Fifty, a hundred, fast as they can move. You know, that guy Miller tossed a fortune out of his office. Want to try for eight? No, I'll quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> There's the mailbox. Keep driving. Back to Miller's? Do you still want to make a deal on this car? <laughs> and now you're up to $16. Turn right at this corner. in that garage. <laughs> be over in an hour. What about those carburetor overhauls? Well, hurry it up. We need them. Hi, baby. Still sore? Mm -mm. What's up? Well, um, a fellow from the east came in to sell Miller a car. Yeah? Well, Miller threw him out. But he says he's got big connections. He wants somebody to handle a lot of cars for them. Who does he work for? Bud Haynes. What'd you tell him? Nothing. I just had him drive me here. He's waiting downstairs.
Hey, Chicago, come up here. My name's Garver. Simmons. Nice job you've got down there. The best. Clean as a factory delivery. I see the papers. Henry Simmons, eh? So you work for Bud Haynes. When did you last see Bud? Two weeks ago. I thought he was picked up in Chicago. Sure. He can beat a dozen reps. They'll never hold him. You said you could deliver me all the cars I can use. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I said I could deliver the cars I didn't say to you. Drop back tomorrow. We'll talk about it. That ought to give you time to check. How about showing me the town? After all, I'm a stranger. Well, I don't think sure, I... Sure, why not? Go ahead. We got a welcome the visiting fireman. Well, all right. You can drive me home and pick me up later. Got any gas? Plenty. Help yourself. I'll meet you downstairs. Hey, what are you trying to do? Brush me off? We had a date tonight, remember? Look, this is business. Find out all you can. See what you can get me on a guy named Hank Simmons from Chicago, supposed to be working for Bud Haynes. Yeah, right away. That's Ed from Ken. Yeah, how's he doing? Not bad. He thinks there's a tie-up between Miller and the United Garage. Which is run by Russ Garver. The guy in the argument with Thompson the night he was killed. Yeah, Ken is selling Garver the hot Oldsmobile. Garver could be fixing up the hot jobs in the garage and shoving them out through the used car lots. Uh-huh. It has been done. I'll tell you what you might do. Yeah. Get a teletype off to the motor vehicle department, get a list of all Miller's sales for the last three or four days. Then pick up a few of the cars so the lab can go over them. They'd have had to work pretty fast to get rid of a hit-and-run car that quick. Hear anything from homicide? Yeah, they're checking all the hospitals and doctors, and then they're starting on the garages. Well, I've notified them we've got a plant in the United Garage. Best this town's got to offer? I suppose you've got better. You're not kidding. No, well, if Chicago is so great, then why did you leave? I told you before, strictly business. How long have you been in the racket? Twelve years. Lived in my first car when I was 20. Never done time, either. Working for Bud Haynes three years, get 25% of the profits. Anything else you... Say, wait a minute, take it easy, honey. You got all night. So? So you don't have to hurry unless you want to get loaded. Well, why shouldn't I? So is there a law against it or something? How does your boss feel about your, your tie-up with Russ? What do you mean? Now, look, let's be honest. That was quite an act he put on today. <laughs> Forget about him. He doesn't mean a thing. Oh, you go pretty strong for that Russ guy, don't you? Is that obvious? Oh, well, he probably feels the same way, though. I'm sure. I'm sure he loves me very, very, very much. As, as a matter of fact, as soon as his wife gets him a divorce, he's going to marry me. Oh, Russ is such a sweet guy, if only... Hey, what am I telling you all this for? You haven't told me a thing. That's the way it should be. Keep your mouth shut and you'll always stay out of trouble. It's the first thing you learn in this racket. Never trust anybody. Hi. How'd it go last night? Hmm? Oh, he wants me to go out with him again tonight. Should I? Sure, go ahead. Don't forget he's gonna make us rich if we play it right. Hope she gave me a big build-up. I'll call you later. Yeah, she sure did. I checked Chicago. They said you're all right, too. 
Why don't you tell me something I don't know? How much merchandise can you deliver? I told you yesterday, all you can handle and more. Look, I run my setup on a cooperative basis. If we made a deal, you'd get a straight cut on everything you bring in. How do I know you can handle the volume? This thing calls for a big operation. Come on outside, I'll show you around. Maybe that'll convince you. Pretty nice setup. Yeah. Salvage record, huh? How many can you switch in a week? All we can find. Well, I got it, boss. No trouble. Yeah, madam was glad to get rid of it. <laughs> Who's that character? Hank Simmons. He's gonna be with us. Ah. What are you gonna do with that? Well, what do you think? Gonna match it, switch the plates, fix the papers and sell it? No, no, no. You can't match that. They don't make them anymore. He's right, Mac. Well, what about that deal? I don't know if this is the way you guys operate. This thing's too big for you. Eh, don't let this bother you. Stick around here for a while. Work with us. Go out on a few jobs. You'll see what a smooth setup we've got here. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Show him around, Mac. Let him meet the boys. I got some business. Okay, boss. And get that heap back to Madden. Yeah, yeah. No hard feelings, Mac. Okay, okay. What do you want to know, Big Shot? What makes you handle mostly? Oh, big stuff. Caddies, Buicks. How about Mercury's? Sure, everything. Come on, take a look around. Hey, what are you doing? You Charles Davis? Yeah. You bought this car from the Goodwill lot the day before yesterday? Well, anything wrong with that? Police. Look, Mr. Davis, probably everything is all right. We'll appreciate it if you bring your car down to the lab. Let us run a few tests on it. Yeah, they're all clear so far. Nothing on Miller yet. Oh, there are a few yet to go. Here's a hot car that passed through Miller. Change block number. Looks to me like we're getting the right combination. Well, let's see what we've got so far. Thompson worked for Miller. Miller's secretary was thick with Russ Garver. Thompson gets into an argument with Garver and his secretary in a bar and gets himself killed. Hit and run. Yeah, hit and run. What about Larry? He gets run down by a black Mercury that hasn't been ditched and we're pretty sure hasn't left town. And then Russ Garver buys a stolen Oldsmobile from Hank Simmons. Black Mercury. And now we know Miller's been peddling doctored cars. Think that makes a case? Yeah, it makes three of them. One for homicide, one for auto theft, and one for traffic. Only there are holes in all of them. Who's been feeding Miller his cars? What really happened with Thompson and who killed Larry? We don't want to move too quick and burn it up. Yeah? Hello, all right, send him in. Hi, poet. Hi. Hi. Ken's doing all right. Hi. How do you mean? They offered him a partnership in one of the prettiest stolen car rackets you ever saw. United Garage. How did he work it? Garver checked with Chicago and got a big build-up on Hank Simmons. He heard Hank could get him plenty of stuff, so Garver... Garver, Garver. What's bothering you? What was the description of the car Tom thinks hit Larry? Black Mercury, 47, white sidewalls. The night Larry was killed, Garver beat it away from the hangman's cafe in a black Mercury with white sidewalls. Say, that could plug up a big hole. When do you contact Ken again? In the morning. Tell him to check any parts he can find that might have come from a black mercury. Check for paint, for blood stains, on the dash, maybe on the door. Well, if they kill Larry, wouldn't they ditch the car? Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. Hank. Oh, Hank. Hey, Hank. Matter. Don't you know your own name? I didn't hear you. What do you want? Take a look at it. Not bad. A little rough. You guys ought to file it rough. off. Rough? What do you mean, rough? 
We haven't even tested. No, you haven't. I'm talking about the factory numbers. Yeah, we can handle this all right. How long will it take you to switch it? No time at all. That's not bad. At least they're still making these. I can pick up a hundred to match that. We'll settle for one right now. Well, maybe I better take him along. I might pick up a Maxwell or something. I don't know. Why not? Maybe I better go along and keep Bright Boy out of trouble. When? Tomorrow morning. That's a deal. Tomorrow morning. What are you trying to do, kill my deal? Nah, but there's something wrong with that guy. Look, I checked him, he's all right. Well, he ain't all right with me, Russ. In the first place, he knows from nothing about fixing cars, and he didn't answer to his own name when I called him. Well, if it were to be picked up, it'd ruin our chances, but... Okay, let him go with you, see how he operates. Okay by me. But if he so much as sneezes out of line... <laughs> Why don't they tell me these things? What's up? Dearborn has an idea the car that hit Larry was brought to Garver's garage. Want you to check everything in the garage for blood stains and bike paint. Seems to me they get rid of it. Hasn't turned up. There's still the stockpiles. How's it coming? The one fellow's giving me a little trouble. Got to pick up a car with him tomorrow. Any particular car? He's got to match a wreck. What do you want? 1949 Buick Super. Suppose we put it on Berenda between 4th and 5th facing north. We'll put undercover plates on it. Fine. Don't try to be a hero. Good luck, Ken. So on. Uh... Sorry, miss. You got the wrong guy. Oh, I, I thought for a minute you were someone else. Won't I do? What's the other guy got that I haven't? Excuse me. Not bad, huh? Can't bet a thousand all the time. Look, I can't do anything with this thing. I'll go get a jump bar for the switch. Stick around. I've got it. Hurry it up. Somebody, you nervous? Go get the truck. I'll drive this. Mistake, huh? 
Just what is your name? Hank Simmons. <laughs> I think you're lying. That was pretty neat. I had a guy pull that on me once. Yeah? Yeah, a cop. I learned mine in the Army. Uh, come on in the office. I got something I want to talk to you about. Well, you've seen the whole setup now. Is it a deal or isn't it? Oh, <laughs> well, we still haven't talked about money. Twelve hundred a car, delivered here. No, no. Make it fifteen hundred and you fix them and you got a deal. Okay. Get in touch with Haynes. I gotta know so I can get ready. I'll call from the hotel tonight. Call him now. Why not? Hello? Long distance? I want to call Chicago. Miss Bauer? Yes? Here's that Chicago call from Stanley 74463. Switch it to Lieutenant Dearborn at police headquarters. Hello? Who's this? Jonesy. Uh, Jonesy, this is Hank. How's the boss? Ah, oh, great. I wasn't worried anyway. Tell him we, uh, we made a pretty good deal here and ask him how soon he can get them started. Yeah. I'll talk to him tonight and let you know. Or can I call you? Uh, you can call me here. Worked all right. Yeah, fine, Jonesy. I'll be seeing you soon. Take care of yourself, Jonesy. That was Jonesy. Pretty corny, huh? Contact me direct? I know, I know. But this is important. So what's so important you can't send word through Connie? The police picked up one of my customers. They wanted to look over his car, they said. And? It was one of the cars that I got from you. Suppose they find out that it was stolen. Don't get excited, Junior. You've sold plenty of hot cars before. So what if they do find out it's only a fine or short rap? But what of my reputation, my family? I never should have let you and Connie get me into this. Stop whining. It was a swell setup when you were broke and ready to fold. It saved your business. I don't care. I'm quitting now before it's too late. Nobody quits me till I say so. Especially not now with a big deal on that means a lot of dough for all of us. I'm not interested. I'm quitting, and if you try to stop me, I'll go to the police and turn state's evidence. Well, before you do, Buster, I'm not sure, but I think you might have sold the car that killed Thompson. Now, why don't you go home and get a good night's rest? You're going to be moving a lot of cars in the next couple of days. Take a look for yourself, Lieutenant. Here is a photo micrograph that we made of that mark on the fender found in the garage. And here's an exemplar we made with the handle of the motorcycle. Look how perfectly the striations match. Yeah, they match all right. That's conclusive evidence. Well, that makes our case. Put that Chicago call through and tip off Ken. What about homicide and auto theft? Call them. We'll organize our details together and knock over the garage. Pick up Miller, Bill. Right. All right, Mr. Miller. 
You're under arrest. All the boys here? Yeah. How many cars are we supposed to pick up? About 50, they tell me. Hey, you. Where can I find Galvin? Around to the left. Thanks. Galvin? Yeah? I'm Bud Hayes from Chicago. Well, that's swell. Hank didn't tell me you were coming yourself, but now that you're here, it'll make things a lot easier. Hank? Hank's here in jail in L.A. What are you talking about? Yeah? Chicago, put him on. Who do you want? Who's calling? Yeah, I'll get him. Be right back. Should be plenty of scratch for all of us. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Hey, hey. Here's your Chicago call. Hello? Yeah, this is Hank. Who? Bud. <laughs> How are you, old joker? So they let you go, huh? Yeah, everything's all set here. I'm sure we can take care of 50. He'll have the money with him, too. Get out here as soon as you can, huh? I'll be seeing you. Oh, it's Bud Haynes. Everything's all set. That's so. By the way, Hank, an old friend of yours just dropped in to see you. Meet Bud Haynes from Chicago. Russ, no, listen. What's wrong? Plenty. Our boyfriend here's a cop. Remember, I told you never trust anybody. Come on, let's go. Another hit and run like Thompson? Maybe. Get in.
Congratulations, Ken. Nice going, Ken. Good luck, Ken. Congratulations. Did they accept your application for Motor Squad? Sure. It's our special training next week. Do you still want to marry a motor cop? What's wrong with that? Well, it's not very good transportation for a honeymoon. Ha, 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 ha.